What's up, guys? We're just getting ready for our four-day hands-on restoration class here next week with Ryan Evans. I'll uh, kind of take you around and show you what we're going to be working on during the class, what we're going to do during the class, what the guys in the shop are going to be working on during the class. So these are the front clips that we work on during the class. This is what the class itself is all focused on, is stripping these. We go over how to set up panels for panel to panel fitment, gaps, uh, do a little bit of metal work, some shrinking, some uh, gap work, and then we go on to getting epoxy over bare metal. That's day one. So in the class, we use VP2050 over bare metal, and then the following day, day two, we come in, we start doing filler work over our 2050, we get that real nice. We go back in the booth. We put more 2050 over our filler work. Day three is the big day. That's the day where we have to prep all these panels, get them in the booth, and paint them all in one day. Different colors. We do candies, stripes. We go over custom artwork a little bit. Uh, layers of things. As you can see, we got some flames on the hood. There's some some checkered flags on this side and obviously these are dirty these have been sitting outside since the last class so this class is going to get to strip all these down to bare metal start over day four we go to cut and buff which is uh, as you can see like this right here this has been sanded on not polished from the last class so when we're looking at cut and polish we're basically taking out all the rippliness of the edge of the light bulbs, making them laser straight. So while we're having the class, some of the guys in the shop will be working on these other projects. Uh, this is a 74, the 74 Buick Electra that we've been working on. It's been back here for uh, oh, a week or two, getting bolted back together, panel fitment established, and it's been epoxy primed, and we're on to filler work. And we're actually getting close to being done with filler work on this we're we're getting our panel panel is looking nice our gaps are looking nice we're getting close to getting another round of primer on this one this car we did a ls3 4l80 in we're leaving a lot of the electra stuff in there we're basically making this car to be as if it were a 74 electra built with today's technology we're not really changing the look of the car. Uh, it's going to basically stay looking just like a 74 Electra, but everything's going to fit. Uh, gaps, panel to panel, all that. But we got the LS3. We painted up like a 455. We're going for that 455 old school look under the hood with some new school stuff. And over here, we've got a 70 Chevelle we've been working on. This is uh, this project has escalated a lot since it came. Hey, this car came in for a paint job. Uh, we were going to just paint the outside, paint the jams, basically because none of the panels fit the car. The doors didn't fit. The fender gaps were terrible. The hood was a mile high in the back. And that is all escalated now. Uh, we're going to be pulling the dash out in here. We just got the vintage air mocked up on the back side of the dash and welded all the holes and everything shut in the dash that we need to. So now we're gonna start uh, filler work on this next week on the firewall. Uh, we are gonna paint the whole bottom of the car as well. We're gonna do, this is gonna be indigo blue with a uh, Mazda white tri-coat uh, stripes. And we're gonna go stripes down the firewall, down the car, down the bottom, just like we did on that Camaro. And this one is basically more or less turned into a full build. We didn't disassemble the entire chassis. The chassis was pretty nice, uh, but we did a lot of upgrades. We put QA1 suspension on it. Uh, we pulled the, the 454 out, kind of freshened some things on that, repainted that. We put a TKX 5-speed in it. Uh, we put 2017 CTSV interior in this one as far as seat center console, all that kind of stuff. So this is going to be a pretty nice car. As you can see, with the headliner that's in it is still in it. It's falling out. So we need to have this car painted and back on its chassis. By the first week of May, we've got an appointment at the upholstery guy to get headliner, uh, 
the package tray, th all the interior panels uh, done. And then we simply bolt our interior, our 17 Cadillac seats and whatnot get bolted in. Dash goes in, said and done. Gonna, we're gonna paint this car, then put it back on its chassis and then bolt the car together. Then we're gonna mask the stripes, lay the stripes and then re-clear the whole outside of the car. So right here, this is the LS3 that's gonna go in the Buick. Uh, as you can see, we, we're going for the, the red and black theme like the 455 would have had. Obviously this looks a lot nicer than what the 455 would have had, but the 455 would have had mostly black uh, accessories, red engine, it would have had red heads and a red intake with a black air cleaner up top. So what we're doing, we have a uh, an engine cover, an LS engine cover, covers everything on the top. You really don't see any of this stuff, but it does have a, a right around the fuel rails, it's got like a nice line that makes the valve cover covers and the intake cover look separate even though it's all one piece. So what we're gonna do is paint that piece red and leave the intake cover black. And that is gonna really, we're, we might put some Buick stuff on there and make it look classy. And then this one, that 95 Camaro that we've been working on, uh, we've got the CTS dash, 2011 CTS dash in there. Uh, we're gonna change some more of this stuff. We've got a, uh, an iPad. We're gonna get rid of that doubled in. We've got an iPad that goes in there. We've made a different piece. That's gonna be a little different. Uh, as far as the shifter hole, we're gonna put, this is a six speed. We're gonna do a sequential shifter. Uh, this, these seats are 2022 Camaro Recaros. They are actually very comfy, heated, cooled, all the stuff. Same as the back seats. We're still working on the back seats a little bit, but we've got them in there and they, they mostly fit. They're not bolted in. The back section is not bolted in at the moment. And then under the hood's the fun part. We've got a Turbo LS, Turbo LS1. We're gonna run about 10 pounds of boost to it. Tyler's been getting some piping and mounting some things, getting that all ready to rock and roll. We've got some headers that fit on there real nice. So he's got one, one exhaust header run up to the flange. So that one is gonna go to there. And then from here, three inch out down through here, we're gonna have an intake. The charge pipe's gonna come up through here, right into there. And this one is actually gonna come out and down through here, way down here to the intercooler, right there. PPG has been kind enough to help us out with the class. They always do, they always come through for us. All the products that we use during the class as far as sprayables, this is basically it. 2050, DPLV 50, 80, uh, DT 1585, 1595. We got some black base coat here, and then we use the VC 5700 clear to top it all off. So earlier this week, that Ingersoll ran, this has been the the bad boy that's run the shop ever since we've been here. And uh, earlier this week, we had a switch panel. This one decided to uh, not work anymore. So we're still waiting on this. We've done some tests. It will work when this is back to us. So in the meantime, we got another one. We got a Sea Air. Uh, this is 25 CFM at 175. And then that Ingersoll is 27 CFM at 175. So we've got roughly 50 CFM at 175 PSI. Now, uh, see over in the corner, we got our air dryer hooked up. Got three stage that goes to the whole shop. But what we've done is before we had that Ingersoll Rand in there with a 60 gallon extra tank, what we've done is actually put that on top of the compressor room. So now we've got 220 gallons at 175 of air storage with 50 CFM at 175. This should be more than enough air for the five of us here in the shop. We don't really show a whole lot of the upstairs of the shop, but this is the upstairs. This is the classroom. This is where the lecture part of the class happens. Uh, we go over a lot of 
Uh, actually, a lot of the YouTube videos that are on our channel, we go over a lot of the information that's in those videos uh, on the on the TV there. But we're set up for 14 people, can have spots in the class. We generally set it up for 12 people. And if there's a few that come and go or a few that, you know, they don't take the class or we at the last minute somebody wants to join the class uh, we can accommodate all that then but in our classroom here we've this actually was an apartment above this shop and so we've got a full kitchen with all the stuff classroom there's a bathroom up in that corner which we have ppg'd out i'll show you that real quick it's pretty cool bathroom for a for a body shop are all decked out in here all the ppg stuff everywhere we've got all the little trinkety the coloring book and some old mopar stuff and we even painted our toilet a lot of people are kind of messaging us asking us what do we do with all our parts well this is all the stuff that we don't usually show we have the rest of this apartment up here as you can see is blocked this this whole system we have a system we know where everything is you know how that goes but we've got Chevelle parts up here, Lincoln parts up here, Camaro parts up here. Uh, we've got stuff everywhere up here. And uh, we all know what it's for. There's some Harley stuff that is going to be getting buffed here before too long. And we just got stuff everywhere up here. It's, uh, it's, it's a mess. It's an organized mess. We try to keep it as clean as possible. But the bedrooms up here... Every car kind of has a bedroom. As you can see, this is lots of Buick parts in here. And there's lots of Chevelle parts out there and lots of Camaro parts in there. And so that's our part storage system for the most part. Uh, we do have three 40 foot storage containers outside as well that we can put a car in if need be. We can put parts in if need be, uh, chassis, rotisseries, things like that, that we don't want sitting outside. We put them in there, lock them up. Nobody can get to them. No mice can get to them. And right in here, this is where all the magic happens. We just cleaned our booth out. Uh, I painted some Harley stuff and a couple motors, but other than that, we basically just cleaned our booth out, washed the walls, new booth mask on the walls, new dirt trap on the floor, new intake and exhaust filters. We revamped our exhaust uh, venting and we put some dampeners and things in so we can actually pressurize the paint booth instead of the exhaust sucking harder than the intake is pushing. Now we can adjust that so we can get our uh, barometric pressure in the booth just right. We can, we can actually make the booth pressurized so that when I come in the booth and I open this door, the air isn't sucking in, it's actually blowing out. So any dirt that may be coming in with me or from the paint room is actually getting pushed out instead of sucked in. And since we've cleaned this, the few things I've painted since then have been way cleaner. So really happy about that. We changed all our air fittings over to high flow in here. So this is where we're going to be doing all the priming, painting, spraying, clearing, all the stuff for the class. It's going to happen right in here. And then this is the shipping department. This is Brittany's domain. She's got her office out there. She prints all the labels, does all the orders, emails, etc. in the office. Then she comes in here. We've got all the blocks laid out, organized, I'll say. Uh, through this door, there's a garage where we keep all the, I'll say, overstock uh, when these boxes get filled and we don't have room for any more in here, they stay out there. But this is the linear block operation side of things. Uh, we've got different sets, stacked sandpapers, all that kind of stuff. So this is, this is Brittany's domain. This is the shipping department. Order fulfillment happens back in this corner of the shop.